Hello everybody. Um, good afternoon, I'm actually greeting from Maine. I was wondering if there is anybody who is uh, watching me now, please could you let me know if um, my voice is clear. <laughs> if there is anybody who is watching at the moment, I would like to get confirmation that my voice is getting through me. And I can be able to to proceed. As we await, as uh, we wait to see uh, who ever comes first, I'm can be able to confirm. I guess we will look for some gospel music, and I can play gospel music while waiting. Anybody? Seemingly there is nobody present at the moment. Is it as if there is nobody watching at the moment? Should anybody be online, please? I would like to get confirmation if my voice is getting through. Okay, I can see you, uh, Boris. Welcome, Boris. <laughs> Please, would you let me know if you can hear me? Uh, please, Boris, please, Honorin, welcome. And would you please let me know, would you mind letting me know if my voice is getting across? You might, you can type, you can type in the comment section to confirm if my voice is getting across. Great poet, the great poet Eric Gale. Welcome, please. Sir. Could you let me know if you are getting me? I up to now, I'm not so sure if uh, the people watching me can hear me because uh, the electronic uh, gadget I'm using for this live video is one I've not been using in the past. So uh, I would like confirmation. I would like to hear. Okay, you are listening, which means my voice is going across. Okay, thank you so much. That gives me assurance now, and I think I will be able to proceed now. Thank you very much. Okay, loud and clear, fine. Oh, that further reassures me. So this afternoon, I'm going to talk about uh, the submissions for the ongoing uh, best new, and new is in quotes, best new African poet uh, 2018 anthology, but I will use that as um, a leeway to talk about uh, poetry submissions in general or even literary submissions and then the next thing I will discuss about will be um, Erasmus plus and uh, especially the exchanges the academic exchanges and then I will also if time permits talk about some career orientation matters especially when it comes to uh, countries like Cameroon and many other uh, countries on the African continent and uh, that being said Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for the confirmation. That being said, I would really like to plead with people uh, about uh, availability online uh, in the days ahead for a very long time. I will not be very available online. And when I mean by being very available, it means I may not be quite responsive to um, messages within the day except during the weekends and i will also give priority to urgency i'll give priority to how urgent messages are so um 
and I'm really pleading, please, when there is something to ask or to say or to discuss, I would prefer what the style I use, which is like often I, I, I would prefer to greet the person. I could say hello. I could ask how the person is doing and I go straight and write my message as long as it can be and send to the people because when they become available, they will read and announce and reply me. So um, that's the same thing I would be pleading with all the people I uh, who come to me for guidance, for advice and counseling about education, about writing, about uh, career choices and whatsoever. Please, when there is something, I would prefer you can give me a short greeting of hello or good morning or whatsoever form you choose. And you might ask how I'm doing, but you go straight to your point. Do not expect that I will always be there to instantaneously answer messages and say, hello, hi, how are you? I'm fine. And then until we get to the core of your discussion, because sometimes I am attending to many, many people. And then besides attending to people, I have other activities to take care of. And it is not so easy to be able to every time have an instantaneous discussion. But if you go straight and write whatsoever, I think I always create time to be able to uh, reply to people. And this is how it will be for the most part and for a very long time uh, starting now because of uh, work related and study related um, matters I have to attend to and I will, within the week and often too, one can be online not because of purposes of chatting, but because Facebook for different people is used for different purposes. For example, I use Facebook to get access to news uh, to news both uh, at home and abroad. And I use Facebook for research purposes to check uh, pages, research foundations and pages of, uh, uh, and groups I've subscribed to, which you can then follow up with links and download research papers or even buy books and do read. So, and I do understand that many people also use it that way. And uh, it would be good that we do understand this so that we should never just assume that anytime we see the the green light showing that somebody is online means that the person is available for a chat. And it can also be that like it happens with me sometimes we're using a gadget that is connected to Wi-Fi and then you just like turn down the thing or you leave it suspended for a time and you are busy doing some other activities and it will be showing that you are actively online whereas you are not even at all. So I do thank everybody for the understanding about this. And now I would like to take the first point for discussion today. And I'm really pleading this first point. I think I may have to discuss this more in French. But anyway, I'll be discussing in English. But if you are listening to me and you speak French and you're not very clear about a point, please do ask. I'm saying so because currently there is a call uh, we are doing for submissions to the best new African uh, poets 2018 anthology. And this is an anthology that has been running for a couple of years, edited by uh, Tendai Mwanaka and Daniel Purificacio. Um, and I'm going to be part of the team this year. I'm joining the, 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 the team of the editors. I will be the third editor with them. And I will be working particularly with uh, submissions in the French language. So uh, while uh, Tendai is going to be working on submissions in English, and Daniel will be working on submissions in Portuguese and sometimes Spanish. So, and uh, I would like to discuss about this and to encourage those of us watching and watching me now to share the call because the call is on my timeline in French, but I think I also shared it some time ago in English. The deadline, the deadline for submissions is the 10th of October and we are going to be very strict about the deadline. So any submission that comes in after the tent will not be looked into. And I would be very grateful if we can share the call, especially in French, but also even in English as wide as possible. Because uh, from our statistics in the past years, the anthology has been hugely, 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 and for obvious reasons anyway, dominated by submissions and, in, and then finally selections from Nigeria and then South Africa or Southern Africa, including South Africa and Zimbabwe and a number of countries in the Southern uh, parts of Africa and then Ghana. And there, there have been less submissions when it comes to uh, especially countries from Francophone Africa. So this year, and the advantage uh, Cameroonians have is that Cameroonians are bilingual in English and French, not to talk about our indigenous languages. So we can submit in both French and English 
and it will really be a good thing if we can have more submissions coming from Cameroon, both English and French, and then uh, and also our indigenous languages because we are accepting submissions in English, in French, in Portuguese or Spanish, but I'm not so sure about Spanish, but also most especially in African indigenous languages. And the rule is that for any submission in an African indigenous language, and one of our mother tongues, um, like Mbesa, for example, which I speak and write, it is expected that you submit a written poem in that language, the original poem in that language, plus a translation into English. Please do not forget this one. If you are submitting in an indigenous language, you make sure that it is accompanied by a translation into English. So um, that is basically the information I'm giving. And I want to say that so far, yeah, submissions are coming in, and uh, mostly in English. I think so far we have not received any submission in French. I've not even seen anyone in Portuguese. And I, we have observed that uh, many people uh, do not know how to go about submissions. Please, I would not like to talk about how to present your points on paper, but generally it is expected that as a writer, whether young or emerging or established or in the process, it is good to do some research. And, and, and luckily, thank God we have Google at our disposal. Now, if you just go to Google and you enter how to prepare a manuscript or a poetry manuscript, you would download lots of things, both in PDF and in uh, Microsoft Word, which will teach you, you will ask because there is a particular way of presenting a poetry manuscript and a particular way of presenting a fiction manuscript. And um, we are seeing a lot of these issues. It is true that we may not really uh, look into them, but for other poetry submissions, for other submissions, please be well aware that when you do not respect those things, you may write very, very good poetry, very, very good fiction, and it will be rejected automatically. Another thing is that people will even send a submission without any short greeting. It is highly recommended. In fact, rules of basic living and decorum will, re will require that you at least write dear editors and then you, you introduce yourself briefly, or at least you say, fine, attach my submission of maybe three poems or four poems, and it is even good sometimes so that you mention the poems there for consideration in your anthology of best African uh, new poets or best new African poets uh, 2018 anthology. And then you attach, remember our instructions are that you attach your um, poems as a word document. The word document should contain between one and three points at a maximum please do not go above the three because many people will submit and we have to screen and come out with something that is representative of the entire continent so one between one and three points and then in the same document you should include information your contact information your full name and your pen name if you do have one your contact information including telephone number and email address and then there's a, there should also be a short biographical note about you a short biographical note and preferably short biographical notes are to be in the third person in the third person point of view so and there should not be more than 100 words there shouldn't be more than 100 words and please when you are sending each submission, make sure that you use the three email addresses of the three editors. You use them at once so that they, you send it once, but it goes to the three of them at the same time. And this is very important because if you just send, I've noticed some people who even just send to me alone or who send to another editor alone, you run a risk because if I should forget your submission, it will be forgotten. But if, if you send to the three of us, there are chances that at least three people will not forget the same thing at the same time except that there is something uh, not so good happening, maybe spiritually, I, I don't know. So I think that up to now that I've said this, it would be good that I briefly summarize the same information in French because we are, like I'm saying, highly, highly encouraging people to submit in the French language because submissions in French language as per last year were not very, very encouraging, though the number really um, kind of went up because I did some work to contact a, f a number of friends in different African countries that use French, but I would be happier 
this year if we can circulate it more and so i'm calling on my friends in countries like benin in countries like senegal in countries like cote d'ivoire in countries like gabon the two congos the congo republic in brazil and then uh, the democratic republic of the congo chad uh, central african republic francophone cameroon uh, Burkina Faso, uh, Mali, uh, Niger, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, etc., etc. Please and Burundi, we would really, really do appreciate to welcome submissions coming in from all these countries. And I do also know that there are people even in purely Anglophone African countries who write so well in French and they may also be interested in uh, submitting. But I should also mention that priority will be given to people who submit for the first time which means that if you submitted last year and you were selected, you will have less chances of being selected this year. And in fact, it is even advised and encouraged that you do not submit this year so that you, we give space to new voices in the anthology. But we have a space that we try to keep people who have submitted and have been successfully selected in past editions to make them continuously part of the, the, the project by doing what we call collaborative poems. So for this year, I will be running a collaborative poem in, for, for the French language entries of last year. If you submitted last year in French and you were selected, please, we will have to choose a topic or an idea and work on it collaboratively, as many of, of us as possible, and come up with one poem, with one text, which is a collaboration. And there might also be even interviews of some of the people who submitted last year. And so this is the way that uh, people who were successful last year can get into the anthology this year but be reminded please that for now we shall be giving priority to new voices to people who were not selected neither in 2015 nor 16 nor 17. Uh, that being said i think i should uh, summarize in french if there is anybody in french or even if there is not i know that this uh, video is going to be shared and people will listen so euh, bonjour à, à tout le monde. Maintenant, je veux euh, donner un résumé de ce que je viens de dire jusqu'à présent. Euh, de un, euh, j'ai euh, essayé d'expliquer, de, de, de donner un mot euh, sur ben, ma disponibilité en ligne. Désormais, euh, ça serait très, très difficile pour moi en semaine de pouvoir répondre à des messages sur euh, Facebook Messenger. Mais en week-end, je peux toujours le faire, euh, le temps me permettant et que généralement c'est conseillé que euh, lorsque, euh, surtout pour ceux qui me contactent souvent euh, pour euh, les conseils en, en matière de, de bourse scolaire, de l'éducation, d'orientation et des carrières professionnelles, que c'est important lorsqu'on a à, à me dire, à me demander, je préfère un message complet, c'est-à-dire on peut oui dire bonjour, on peut dire salut, on peut dire comment tu vas, mais après cela, il faut continuer à écrire tout le message et le laisser comme ça quand j'aurai le temps, je vais le lire et je serai capable de, 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 de formuler une réponse euh, au moment euh, donné, parce que je ne peux pas euh, garantir, euh, je ne peux pas euh, dire qu'à tout moment, je peux toujours répondre à tout message, surtout euh, lorsqu'on a affaire avec plusieurs personnes euh, qui sollicitent euh, un peu de l'assistance et on a aussi d'autres euh, activités euh, ou des responsabilités, euh, que ce soit académique ou en matière de recherche, qu'on doit remplir. Donc, euh, je vous remercie euh, à tous mes amis euh, sur Facebook, euh, sur les autres euh, euh, réseaux sociaux pour la bonne compréhension et c'est aussi une chose que j'ai même oublié de le signaler en anglais c'est toujours toujours très très important que avant d'appeler quelqu'un sur par exemple euh, messenger ou whatsapp c'est toujours important de le signaler de d'envoyer de, 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 de un petit texto écrit euh, dit bonjour ou salut telle personne est ce que je peux t'appeler maintenant parce que souvent les gens peuvent être au travail dans un bureau dans une réunion et surtout en journée et, et si on appelle directement, peut-être la personne a éteint son téléphone ou il a mis le téléphone en mode vibre, mais pour le messenger, il ne l'a pas fait parce que normalement, messenger, c'est un réseau social. Et donc, avec des choses comme ça, je crois qu'il est toujours important de, de demander d'abord avant d'appeler parce que je crois que quand c'est un appel direct sur le téléphone, on peut comprendre. 
parce que normalement, le téléphone, c'est pour les appels. Mais les choses comme Facebook, c'est pour beaucoup d'activités. Il y a des gens, par exemple, moi, qui utilisent Facebook pour pouvoir avoir accès, accès je m'excuse, pour avoir accès à, au journal, euh, aux informations, aux journaux, euh, et, ainsi que euh, pour faire euh, de la recherche euh, académique. Donc, c'est toujours important de le comprendre et que ce n'est pas nécessairement à chaque moment que... Euh, il semble que quelqu'un est connecté ou qu'il est en ligne, que la personne est disponible pour discuter. Parce que a, la personne peut être là juste pour chercher un lien à un article scientifique ou à quelque chose d'autre qu'il va poursuivre pour des, des, des autres raisons. Ou la personne peut être peut-être en train d'utiliser le réseau Wi-Fi et que lui, il a oublié de, de se déconnecter. Et à ce moment-là, on peut toujours comprendre ou croire que... Surtout en journée. Et comme je, je, je l'ai déjà dit, pour moi, désormais, pour des raisons qui sont liées à mon travail, à la recherche, je serai beaucoup plus disponible pour répondre aux questions de, de personnes pendant le week-end. Cela dit donc, j'ai aussi parlé de cette anthologie de poèmes intitulée anthologie des nouveaux meilleurs, mais meilleurs entre guillemets, puisque l'art, c'est toujours quelque chose de subjectif, euh, que euh, pour euh, le poète africain, euh, pour l'année 2018, et c'est une anthologie euh, où je vais travailler ensemble avec deux autres euh, rédacteurs euh, qui sont euh, Tendai Monaka et Daniel euh, Purif Purification. Et Tendai, il va travailler sur le poème en anglais. Daniel va travailler sur le poème en, en portugais ou en espagnol. Et moi, je vais travailler sur le poème en français. Et je suis là pour euh, nous encourager, surtout, surtout mes amis écrivains euh, du Bénin, du Sénégal, c'est-à-dire de l'Afrique francophone, la partie francophone du Cameroun ou les Camerounais qui sont bilingues en français et en anglais mais aussi euh, ailleurs en Afrique, surtout le Gabon, le Congo, les deux Congo, Congo Brazza et Congo Kinshasa, euh, le Burundi, euh, le Tchad, euh, la République centrafricaine, euh, et, euh, le Niger, le Burkina Faso, la Côte d'Ivoire, euh, le Sénégal, euh, le Togo. Euh, J'aimerais que vous partagiez bien euh, l'appel à contribution à ces points parce que euh, euh, de toutes les façons, c'est la première année que moi je vais... Euh, me rejoindre à l'équipe en tant que rédacteur, mais l'année dernière, j'étais là comme participant simple et heureusement, j'ai été retenu et je remercie l'équipe pour euh, m'avoir euh, retenu. Et maintenant, euh, le constat qu'on a fait depuis des années, parce que c'est une, une initiative de Tendai Monaka qui euh, court déjà, je crois, depuis 2015, peut-être même avant 2015, et que euh, le constat général, c'est que chaque fois, euh, on a beaucoup plus de participants euh, qui vient du Nigeria et c'est aussi pour des, 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 des raisons bien justifiables parce que le Nigeria, comme nous tous, nous le savons, c'est l'un des pays le plus avancé en matière de la littérature africaine. Donc, on a souvent eu euh, cette domination de, de la participation venant de la part des Nigériens suivis par les Africains du Sud et les, et les, les ressortissants des autres pays euh, euh, membres de l'Afrique australe. Et c'est donc pour cette raison que euh, j'aimerais qu'on partage bien, bien l'appel pour qu'on puisse aussi avoir quand même euh, un nombre appréciable de, de contributions euh, venant des de, 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 de poètes qui écrivent en français. Et nous allons accepter euh, les poèmes en anglais, en français, en portugais et en langue. Euh, indigène en langue locale africaine. Et je tiens à rappeler que pour les poèmes en langue africaine, pour chaque poème en langue africaine, il faut que le poème soit accompagné d'une traduction en anglais. Ou peut-être en français, mais de préférence, on, c est, c est, ce sera en anglais la traduction. Et chacun qui veut participer peut envoyer un poème ou maximum trois poèmes. Et les un ou trois poèmes doivent être dans un document Word et dans le même document il faut l'information sur le participant, c'est-à-dire euh, l'adresse de contact, son nom 
euh, et son nom de plume, son synonyme, s'il y en a un, l'adresse électronique, euh, et le numéro de téléphone, ainsi que euh, oui, euh, une petite biographie sur la personne qui ne dépasse pas 100 mots, qui ne dépasse pas 100 mots. Et de préférence, euh, la biographie doit être rédigée à la troisième personne du singulier. C'est très important de noter ces choses. Et je disais aussi que jusqu'à présent, on a constaté, parce qu'il y a déjà des, des contributions qui arrivent, et, et pour chaque contribution, il faut envoyer à nous trois. Il faut utiliser les adresses électroniques, les trois qui sont là. Parce que si vous utilisez seulement une seule adresse, vous courez un risque. Il peut arriver que euh, l'une des personnes oublie votre euh, contribution. Et si c'est à, à une seule personne que cela a été envoyé, il y a un grand risque ça, c'est déjà oublié. Mais si c'est toujours envoyé à nous trois, on, a, on aura toujours plus de chances que les trois personnes peuvent se souvenir de votre contribution. Et euh, la date limite euh, pour euh, la soumission des contributions, c'est le 15 octobre. Donc, toute contribution qui arrive après le 15 octobre ne sera pas considérée. Et je disais aussi que généralement, il y a une manière de présenter un manuscrit des poèmes ou un manuscrit de nouvelles ou un manuscrit de romans. Et ces choses-là, nous pouvons même les faire facilement ces jours grâce à la recherche Google. Il faut simplement entrer sur, dans, dans, dans le champ de recherche de Google, par exemple, comment préparer mon manuscrit de poèmes. Et vous allez voir tant, tant, tant d'entrées, que ce soit en PDF ou en Word, en Microsoft Word. Là où vous allez voir comment il faut présenter le point, là où le nom du, du point doit figurer et comment la première page, à quoi ressemble la première page, où mettre l'adresse du point, où mettre le nombre même des, des mots qui sont utilisés et, et, et ainsi de suite. Et parce que généralement, pour le moment, euh, il y a ce constat que les gens ne le font pas. Mais surtout, surtout, ce qui est un peu gênant, c'est que souvent on voit les gens qui viennent juste balancer de la... Euh, contribution sans même saluer le rédacteur. C'est très important de dire au moins bonjour euh, le rédacteur ou bonjour à l'équipe euh, ou bonjour l'équipe de best, euh, meilleure euh, euh, anthologie de meilleurs poètes, nouveaux poètes africains 2018, virgule, et on se présente un peu ou bien au moins on peut dire euh, vous trouverez euh, en pièce jointe ma contribution à l'appel, au moins, au moins, c'est important. Parce qu'il y a des gens, vous pouvez bien écrire, vous pouvez être un, un écrivain exceptionnel, mais pour juste des petites raisons comme ça, qui sont beaucoup plus d'ordre professionnel, la présentation de, de son contenu et même euh, la présentation lors de sa communication officielle, on peut être rejeté. C'est vrai que pour le moment, peut-être nous n'allons pas le faire, mais je le dis parce que si on est écrivain, si on va participer à ces projets, ça veut dire qu'on va aussi participer à beaucoup plus de projets dans l'avenir. Et donc, c'est important de, de mettre cela toujours, 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 euh, de ne de, 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 de pas oublier parce que c'est important. Il y a des gens qui écrivent très, très bien, mais parce que lorsqu'ils envoient, ils ne respectent pas les, 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 les règles de, de soumission ou de, de l'appel à la soumission que finalement... Personne n'a même le temps de lire parce que dès lors qu'on ouvre, il n'y a aucun message qui accompagne et même la présentation physique sur le papier n'est pas appréciable peut-être, euh, surtout pour les projets comme celui-ci parce que l'année dernière, je, je pense qu'on a eu plus de, de 800 ou 1000 personnes qui ont contribué et il faut lire et choisir les meilleurs poèmes, toujours entre guillemets pour euh, pouvoir représenter euh, un peu tout le continent, vous allez comprendre donc que vous risquez de ne pas être inclus et ce n'est pas euh, lié à votre talent, mais beaucoup plus à la présentation, aux aspects, comme je le dis, professionnels. Donc, merci de partager l'appel qui est sur euh, mon mur Facebook. En français, partagez autant que possible, parlez-en avec vos amis qui écrivent surtout en français, mais aussi des langues locales, aussi les langues locales. Et les critères sont simples, on n'a pas de limite d'âge, mais on préfère, euh, le, parce que pour nous, la définition de poète africain, ici, c'est soit un poète qui habite sur le continent africain, ça c'est le 1, ou un poète africain qui, euh, au moment de soumettre sa contribution, habite à l'étranger, ou 
un poète africain qui est né à l'étranger et que l'un de ses parents euh, a, euh, vient de l'Afrique, est né en Afrique, donc euh, c'est cela. Mais je, je crois que oui, bon, c'est un peu cela, notre définition de, de poète africain, mais euh, je crois que les gens qui ont d'autres liens avec le continent africain, vous pouvez, vous pouvez toujours envoyer vos contributions et je, je crois que euh, le traitement sera un traitement de cas par cas. Donc, euh, malgré que ça, cela soit la, la règle générale, je crois qu'il y a d'autres personnes qui ont d'autres liens avec le continent africain et que le contenu et aussi le talent et tout cela mis ensemble, on peut toujours voir ce qu'on peut faire. C'est ce que je peux dire. Là, s'il y a des questions, s'il vous plaît, vous pouvez les poser. If there are questions about these uh, submissions, please, can you ask them? Any questions? And I hope I'm still just being clear that my voice is still being audible for those who are following me up. If there is a question, Any question you have got, please, we're going to ask it now because from here I will be rounding off this issue of the poetry submissions and I will be talking the other two things on my agenda for today. Any questions, any need for clarification? And, and for um, for the young poets who are watching me, please, I mean, especially uh, poets who are just beginning, it is very, very encouraging, it is highly advisable, please, that you do uh, diversify the channels through which you do publish your work so that you become more visible. So if you are a poet, you are an emerging poet or an emerging writer, and there is a particular magazine that easily accepts your work each time you submit there, it's a good thing. We congratulate you, we encourage you, but it will be, um, it will be technically better to try other journals too. By trying other journals, you will, you will, because sometimes you even so, uh, submit to journals that will reject, but and some are so generous that they can reject and give reasons, maybe and give a critique of your work and point out aspects of each uh, of the work that could be improved further. Just as also there are some that just reject without ever giving explanations. And I think more are those that reject and they never give explanations. But rejection is part of the writing a career. It is part and parcel. Many of the bestseller novels we know today, even classics, even classics, if you hear their history of uh, rejection, you understand that rejection never really means that, oh, you have written something so horrible. No, it can just be that it is not what that publishing house is interested in at the time. So there are people who have had novels rejected more than 25 or 100 times and those novels were finally accepted without any modifications and they were published and they went on to become bestsellers and even classics just the same thing applies for poetry and even short stories but it is good to try as many journals and magazines as possible because um your CV, if you are applying for grants if you are applying to add, to attend even writer workshops and things of the sort and uh, or even to do MFAs, uh, Masters of Fine Arts, if you have a degree and you want to do a Masters of Fine Arts in Creative Writing, and no matter how good your writing is, if it has been published in one magazine, I think your CV will be, will be lighter as compared to somebody who could, for example, have published even 10 entries or 15 entries or 20 entries in one magazine. And then somebody who has published only five pieces, but in different magazines, and the magazines are also of high quality, will have more chances than you do. So this is something I just thought I should be sharing with, especially uh, poets who are just uh, starting publication. And that's really the definition of what I mean by young poets. It has nothing to do with the edges of the poets. Any need for clarification? If you need clarification, please just type uh, in the comment section and I will reply you.
okay it seems there is none for now so i will assume and then i move on i was also like i did announce i wanted to talk to about the erasmus plus uh, program but i will be talking specifically because the erasmus plus first of all is the european union's program to support education training youth and sports in europe so it has different kinds of activities and programs and projects both for individuals and organizations and just to remind you it has exchange programs it has internship programs and it has even uh, what uh, is known as the erasmus Mondo's joint masters programs which are programs um, run master's programs run by more than one university in more than one country where you graduate with either a multiple diploma or a joint diploma and at the moment uh, they are more than 50 or close to a hundred different master's degrees of this sort under the Erasmus Mundus joint master's programs and it can always be a good thing to check out and to apply if you are if you want to uh, further your studies and then they also have the Erasmus Mundus joint doctorate. They are about six or five uh, joint uh, doctorates uh, under the program too. And there are also doctoral degrees, PhD programs run by at least two universities in at least two countries. Sometimes they can be even four. Some consortiums have, have even 10 or more universities and students have to choose. But today I want to talk particularly about Erasmus exchange programs. Uh, because the exchange part of Erasmus is not Erasmus Mundus and they are students who are studying in European universities uh, and by European universities I don't only mean universities which are in the European Union because there are many countries in Europe which are not part of the, Uni uh, the European Union but Erasmus exchange programs cover nearly all European countries and so the exchange program basically I'm, I'm saying this because today I was talking with one of my younger ones whom I, I, I advise in matters of education and career orientation and I mentioned this because I wanted him to check it out in his university and uh, but then he was not aware that this thing exists then I thought that I should uh, briefly talk about it today so that it can be helpful not only to him but to many other students so uh, like I'm saying the Erasmus exchange program is one aspect of Erasmus Plus, though in the past it wasn't called Erasmus Plus, now it is called Erasmus Plus, so, which is aimed at encouraging mobility of students, making students go and study outside the countries where they are registered so that they can become more internationalized, they can forge new friendships, they can make more connections and they can get used to the cultures and and educational systems of other countries because these kind of programs are so good in that they make us open to other cultures they make us create more friends and networks but they also make us more tolerant and more multicultural in our approach and in our manners so what happens basically is that wherever you are studying and this does not have to do with erasmus mundus masters please no it means you can be a student registered in a university in Cyprus or in a university in Turkey or in a university in Latvia or in a university in um, uh, Estonia or in a university in Denmark or in France, you are registered there to do a degree. It could be a bachelor's degree for three years or four years, depending on the country. It could also be a master's degree of three years or two years or one year or three years, depending on the country, where you are registered as a student of that specific university. And you are expected to complete your degree in that university and you'll be awarded your degree by that university but what you have to do is it is always good to ask because i can't give general information which i'm not sure so sure about but it is good to go to the international office of your university or to ask at the international office or even at your departmental level but sometimes they will not even know it at the departmental level that such things exist it is good to go to the admissions office or to the international office or ask if there is an Erasmus office because some universities even have their Erasmus offices which are set aside. So you can go there and tell them and, and ask them if the Erasmus exchange exists in that school, in that university. If they say yes, you can ask them more information about how to apply and when to apply. But basically what you do is that 
while you are doing your bachelor's degree or your master's degree, you will find out a university in a different country, still in Europe, where you would like to study for one semester or sometimes two, but preferably it's one semester, you will apply through the appropriate channels in your registered university and you could be granted the permission to do so and even given some funding because these programs are also have some funding, no matter how small it may be, but it has been helping thousands of students. Then you will now, when the time comes, get whatsoever is needed to go to that country. If you're in a Schengen country, you might not even need, and going to another Schengen, you might not even need a visa, but you may also need, but what happens is that you will now go to that university in the chosen semester, and you study throughout there for that semester. It could be really to study and take courses. It could be sometimes for master students they are going there to consult a specific library or even a museum, which is part of the research. So you do that for an entire semester. And during that semester, you are registered in the university that is hosting you and still in your home university, the university where you really registered as a student and you are expecting to graduate with that degree. So when you come to the end of your study exchange program in that university abroad, your transcripts, your results and everything about you will be communicated back to your home university, to the university where you will receive your master's or your bachelor's. And that will be included in your transcripts of your home university. So, and so your home university will give you four transcripts or your two transcripts or whatever number of transcripts they are, including one stating that it was done abroad at the University of X or Y in country X or Y. So this is basically what the Erasmus exchange is all about. So it makes people, it exposes students to different cultures and different educational systems by allowing them to do at least one of the semesters of their academic studies in a university abroad that is part of the Erasmus programs because Erasmus programs are not only for countries that are in the European Union. Though the Erasmus Plus is as a project is conceived by the European Union, but uh, it runs larger than that. It covers all of Europe, if not by nearly all of Europe, I should say. So on this very point, please, if somebody is watching me and they need clarification on this, you should let me know Otherwise, I will also refer you to check the Erasmus uh, Plus website. You, let me see if this is it's possible for me to bring the link and paste here. If it is not, then I will only have to read it out. able to see where to is I'm sorry about this uh, the, the electronic device I'm using for this online uh, live video is one I've not used before so I'm still struggling to find my way out with a number of things even at the moment I can't find where to comment maybe I will reply to one of the comments okay let me do something like this in oh no it's not even working out Okay, what I will do for the moment, I will read out the website to you. And when I am done with this video, I do promise you I will take it and bring it here under the comments. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, so I should be reading. There is this remark, but before this, let me finish with the website. Please follow me. If you have your pens, you can take down. The website is ec. E u r o p a dot e u slash programs programs p r o g r m m e s slash erasmus which is e r a s m u s and then a hyphen plus which is P-L-U-S slash opportunities, O 
P P O R T U N I T I E S slash overview, which is O V E R V E V I E W, and then uh, hyphen, which is like sub uh, lower script. The lower script, which is, I think you'll find that on the, the eight key. So, so uh, lower script and then E-N, E-N, E-N is for English. So it is something like uh, ec.europa.eu slash programs slash Erasmus hyphen plus slash opportunities slash overview lower script E-N. I will uh, bring it to the comments when the video is over. So, um, yeah, there was a question, I think, from Nane, who asked if one is to submit three points, for example, should the subject matter be diversified or can we maintain a specific subject matter? No, 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 feel free, please, submit on as diverse as possible topics. We are not constraining you about the, the topics or the thematic concerns of your work. I think the thematics will also go hand in hand with uh, the aesthetics. So feel free, feel free, but submit your best because uh, it, editors will have to select, especially when they have many interests, will have to select the best interest to make sure that it is more representative. So anybody who is submitting three points, please do not be so sure that all the three points will be taken if, they, if you must be included. So we will be sending out uh, notifications at the appropriate time to notify those whose points have been selected and which points have been selected. Some people may be lucky to have all of these selected. Some may have some of them selected and some unfortunately may not be selected. And th that's just how writing functions. So um, thank you for that question, Nane. I didn't really see when it came. So I think I should also browse again upwards and see if there's another question. Uh, Okay, thank you, uh, my friend, uh, John, John Boyefis, Impact Africa, Israel. <laughs> you say, hey, my friend, your French is still pretty good. <laughs> so you thought I have forgotten French. No, I can't forget French. <laughs> thank you, my brother. Um, so please do share this uh, call for points, which is on my timeline with uh, as many friends and brothers from Chad as possible, Israel. Thank you. Okay, uh, the great poet Eric wrote us saying he had to check out. Thank you. We are always together and we know we can always run to you when we need help in this domain. Uh, okay, so that's why I talk of listening. Okay, thank you for listening. Thank you everybody for listening. At the moment, I was just looking at uh, comments that were especially like questions. Now, at the moment, I can conclude that there is no other question. Since there is no other question, please do, do we have any questions relating to the Erasmus Plus thing or any general question about studies and scholarships? Because I would like to go to the last item on my agenda for today, which is about career matters. Any question? <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Boom, Cecile. Uh, please, any questions? Any questions so far? About, because I think I've done about five or six videos in the past about uh, scholarship opportunities and study abroad opportunities. But today I wasn't uh, so specifically talking about scholarships. I prefer today to talk about this exchange program that is part of the Erasmus Plus. So it is true, I have to apologize. It, what I was discussing today is much more beneficial to people who are currently studying in universities in Europe. But it can also be that you will be studying in Europe one day in the future, or you might have a brother or a sister or a friend who will study in Europe in the future. And such information can always be useful and helpful to them when the time uh, does come. That having been said, um, I think we should go to the point on career matters. Uh, one of the books, I am not doing advertisement, but one of the books I've written is Mounting the Stairs of Challenge. And I think that that book together with many other motivational books is an effort to, to sort out one of 
the worst problems that is plaguing not only uh, Cameroon, my country of birth, but most especially a lot of, or not, if not all the countries in Africa. Uh, it is this whole issue of young people not knowing what they want to do with their lives. There is, a, a, and I, I am, I'm going to use mostly examples from Cameroon, but this is a phenomenon that cuts across the continent. There is this whole um, idea of people finishing high school when they have not yet decided what they want to do with their lives professionally. And when it comes to talking professional and career matters, yes, I know that we are not going by rules of the tongue. We're not going by rules that are so strict that they cannot be bent, but it is always good. Like I've written in my book, one of the books I was talking about is Mounting the Stairs of Challenge. And it really describes or explains how we can tap from the talents and gifts we have to become what we want to become. And it is very possible to become anything we want to become. But the problem is that we end up having lots of people complaining about their lives, saying they didn't succeed, saying they finished school and they are doing nothing. And you will discover that the people didn't really have a, a life, a life uh, objective or a, a specific career objective. It is true that when it comes to matters of careers, you might like one so well, but circumstances may end up uh, propelling you into a different direction. But it is good that even when circumstances send you a different way, you should have a story you can tell people that initially I wanted to become a doctor, but I ended up becoming a teacher, or I ended up becoming a police officer, or I ended up becoming uh, a pilot. And, and, and because it is always good to have plan is when it comes to matters of careers and anybody watching me now who is Cameroonian as I am will agree with me that we have this phenomenon of young people completing high school and starting to write to sit any possible competitive entrance examination into all professional schools and it becomes really like I don't want to say disturbing but really it is you, you won't understand if somebody really wants to be a police officer or they want to be a teacher or they want to be a sports uh, instructor or what do they really want to do because we are discussing this topic i think uh, uh, some of my friends who are into this issue with me they might not even be online now but they may watch later some of them like uh, my friend who runs the brand uh, corporation who is giving guidance counseling and orientation to our uh, to young people in cameroon and I'm into it too, and I'm thanking anybody who is watching, who is running a foundation or an NGO that has to do with matters of orientation and coaching and encouraging people to become what they have to become. This being said, we have noticed this thing, it is growing, and lots of people have complained. I remember the other time, uh, Reverend Father uh, Light was also complaining about the same thing. Uh, uh, and what we have to look at is starting from the consequence. The consequence is that we find lots of people doing jobs where their heart does not belong. If you find all the people whom we can call as like people who will commit very unprofessional practices in their profession, believe you me, if you interview those people, if you can really look through their hearts until you will discover that most of those people are doing jobs they never really wanted to do or jobs that they were not made and meant to do. If you find a nurse in a hospital who, instead of caring and trying to console his or her patients, is rather screaming on them, is being arrogant on them, you, you might understand that that person honestly wasn't meant to be a nurse. And it's just the same thing that you might find a teacher who wants to use shortcuts in teaching or who is not even happy at all being a teacher or who sometimes will, like even just, it's true that we will want to punish our students if they don't do well or if they don't stick to the rules, but you will discover that some people really go to the extreme and it is because they don't love their jobs. We have this phenomenon. It is true. Some people have really like struggled with their careers and then they finally found one which was not even what they planned to do but they have embraced it and they really love it because there is one thing please whether it is by accident or it is by design if we finally fall into a career into a profession we should love it 
Because if you do anything with that love first, you are not going to do it well. If you do anything, and this love is what we call passion, we should be driven by passion to choose the things we want to choose. And while parents can be helpful sometimes to guide their children to choose what they want to become, uh, I am strongly advising our parents to avoid forcing students to do things or their children to do things. It is good to suggest, to brief, to explain, to describe things to your child, but to give them the allowance to choose what they can do best. Do not force your child to become a doctor if that child is meant to be a writer or a lawyer, because you may go to hospital and die, not because it is your day to die, because that child is the doctor who receives you that day, and because that child was not meant to be a doctor and he doesn't treat you like a doctor should do, and you can lose your life, for example. I'm saying this because there are many cases of parents forcing professions on their children. And while it is very much respected and appreciated that our parents guide us in this choice as well as guidance counselors, and I know we have very few of them, it is important, please, that in making choices, we should give allowance to the person concerned. I am here today. Um, it would interest some of us to know that many people wanted to force me to do the sciences in high school because when I passed my ordinary level uh, GCE some years ago, I passed in all subjects. I passed in 11 subjects, including all science subjects and uh, arts subjects. But I had already made up my mind that I was going to do arts. I was going to do uh, the series, including French and history and the literature, which is A1. And I had reasons for this because as far back as uh, second grade of secondary school that's from two, I had already made up my mind that I was belonging to the a, a broad range of jobs or professions that revolve around language and literature. And those jobs include, but amongst many things, being a journalist, being a writer, being an actor, being a singer, and being even a politician or an administrator. And so it was a talk of war between me and some of my uh, parents or guidance and teachers who, because my teachers have always all been my parents and they will continue to always be so. So it's sometimes for some of them, some easily and quickly understood my choices and my decisions and they were very supportive of them, but some took a very long time before they realized. And I'm very happy and grateful that all what they were doing was for my good, even when it wasn't like, going in the direction of what I wanted to do. So um, to, to the young people concerned, if your parents are advising you or forcing you to do a particular job which is not really in your heart, and if you must refuse, please do so politely and with explanations. Yeah, because I'm not here to encourage children to rebel against their parents. No, no, and no, and no. I'm not re encouraging students to rebel or children or young people to rebel against either their parents or their teachers or their counselors or their guidance or, or, yeah, or their guidance counselors. But please, I am saying, or even their mentors, that when you have a point, when you have chosen, when you have decided that this is what I want to be, and you're very convinced about it, and you look inside of you in terms of your abilities, in terms of your learned skills, in terms of which subjects am I good at, in terms of your natural gifts, things that you were born with, which you just need to improve, and then learned skills when you have put all these things together and you study them and you find that these things make it possible or better for me to end up being a dentist, to end up being a teacher, to end up being a pilot, to end up being a lawyer, to end up being a logistics worker, to end up being a security officer, please, you try now to develop good arguments you can use to politely refuse other offers, whether they're coming from your friends or they're coming from your family or they're coming from your teachers or whosoever. So because part of living and living well is being polite. It's being polite and humble in the things we do. So for all the struggles I had with my parents, and by my parents here, I'm including all my teachers because they've always been my parents and they will always be, and guidance and uh, all of these people are my parents and I'm, I'm very thankful to them. And I always made sure that I was polite enough in my explanations to them that I would not want to pursue what they thought was so good. So uh, please 
it will be the same thing. So I am saying that any job we follow because of circumstances, any job we follow just because we find ourselves at one time being unemployed, please, we should be careful about that. Except in other circumstances, when things are so hard, we can get into a job, but as a shortcut or as a means of finally going to another job. And that is why if we remember in economics, there is a whole lesson about uh, mobility of labor, occupational and uh, geographical mobility of labor. Labor should be able to move. You should be able to work in uh, Senegal and later on decide that you will work in France and after some time decide that you come back and work even in Mali or you will go and work in Nigeria or in Ghana. That is geographical mobility of labor. Or you are in the same country, you should be able to work in one state and later on work in another one or work in one region or province and later on work in another one. This geographical mobility of labor, but we also have occupational mobility of labor. You can be a dentist and you really became a dentist because at one point there was an opportunity just at your door to become a dentist, but you know that ultimately you want to end up being a, a psychologist. So you may first become the dentist and then while you are the dentist, do your best to love the dentistry as long as you're still a dentist so that you treat your patients with the care and love that has to go with your job. But you may be saving some money or doing some other preparations on your way to eventually quit dentistry and become the psychologist you want to become. This is mobility of labor in terms of occupation. You can be a teacher. And one thing that is so good about teaching is that teaching is one of the jobs that is so easy to quit it and go in several, several, several directions and go in several directions. So. It is always good that we do a job where we feel satisfied internally. And that is why it is important to choose a job with passion and conviction. One of the questions I always ask people when I'm counseling them, when I'm advising them and giving them guidance on career matters is first and foremost, I ask them, tell me a job, tell me a profession, tell me a job that you will do for the rest of your life even if it doesn't have a salary. I come again, and I'm, I'm inviting all of us watching me today to just give yourself some time, even after this video, and think about that. What is that one single thing I am the happiest person on earth when I do? Because one thing is that often people want to choose their jobs depending first on the salary, or even what people call advantage to savings. And when I'm, it's very, in fact, I don't like to pronounce this word I've just pronounced because it is one of the words that has spoiled our countries, many of our countries in Africa, where you find people go into a job, not because they are the fine fulfillment in rendering service to humanity through that job, but because they want to, first of all, allow their salary stand in the bank, and then they go about creating uh, of unnecessary and unprofessional opportunities to extort cash, to get money unnecessarily and enrich themselves, and they will call that advantage to service. It is, it is one of those phrases that I, I need to go in for prayer as soon as I finish this video as I pronounce it. It's a very bad thing, and it has spoiled many of our systems. It has really done it because it is true that each job, each profession has advantages attached to it, but the, the phrase advantage to service has been misused in a number of countries in Africa, especially Francophone African countries, including my native Cameroon. So it is really a pity when I talk about this because I've, I've entered into buses and I've heard people who are so excited preparing to submit files and maybe sit uh, entrance examinations into some very good schools or, or some uh, professions. And the first reason they are citing is advantage to service as in the negative connotation of our country, which is not good. And that's where we we come to realize that in many professions, people commit a lot of unprofessional things. And customer service is so poor that you will come to a bank or a financial institution, or you go even to a ministry to seek service and you are part and parcel of that ministry, and your colleague who works in that ministry will not only be very arrogant, but can shout at you, can tell you to go out, can tell you now drive back. So it's, it's, it's very bad. And if people choose jobs 
based on their passions, on their abilities, and on their convictions, I am pretty much sure that we, we can be able to avoid lots of these things. And please, when I'm talking about jobs, we shouldn't forget I am also including here being your own boss, creating your own business, and employing other people. I'm saying this because one of the reasons for which our continent is still lagging behind and may do so for long is that we have educational systems that need complete overhauls. Most of our educational systems are still just slight modifications of colonial curriculum. And the effect is that we are seriously and consecutively every year producing job seekers instead of producing job creators. This is one of the fundamental reasons for which our continent is lagging behind in a number of things. And for those of us who have links or interactions with our Francophone culture in Africa, we will all understand that this too has to do with history because this is something too that is even common in France. If you look at France, if you compare France with the UK and the US, you will discover that even in France today, France is still struggling to get people of the mentality of la fonction publique. Whereas in countries like the US and the UK, Anglo-Saxon countries and even countries like China, people are mostly interested in the private sector, in creating things in generating activities for themselves and for the others. And that is why when we bring the example closer back to us here at home, you will see the difference in Nigeria and in Ghana as compared to, let's say, Gabon and Cameroon. Let me just take these four examples. And even Kenya, yeah, you will take, and then South Africa, you find that these are countries in which most young people are not so interested in getting into jobs offered by the state. But if you run across all Francophone African countries, you will believe me in all of them. There is this general syndrome that for every 100 young people, about 80% of them or 90% want to sit a concours in course. Let me use this French word, concours, which is competitive entrance examination. So we need to be able to grow and to rise above these things. We, we should be able to do so. Because as I'm saying, these problems in Manet, they are linked and they are really, really interconnected with the kind of educational system we have. Because we have educational system, we really need to, uh, to rework the curriculum and to be able to teach people, young people, to understand that there is no country on earth where everybody works in an office. That there is no country on earth where everybody works for the government. That in every country of the or on earth, there is the private and there is the public sector. And that for any prosperous country on earth, you will discover that more people there choose the private sector. And if you are watching me and you are in the private sector and you have recruited people and you are not paying them well and you are not treating them well, please do repent. Because another thing that is discouraging people from joining the private sector, especially here in Cameroon, is that people pay very low salaries and on to that, the add maltreatment of the people working under them. Please, please, for us to be able to encourage people to work in the private sector, especially in a country which already has this mentality emanating from its educational system that everybody wants to work for the government, please, it is also good that we understand we have to encourage people and to make uh, uh, working environments very enabling, very encouraging by valuing the worth of our employees by understanding whether you have a school and you're recruiting teachers, whether you have a health center and you're recruiting nurses, whether you have a business and you are recruiting sales agents, whether you have a farm and you're recruiting workers on your farm, please, you have to understand that without those people, that business will crumble. And that we, together with those people, that business can always grow. For you are good, for they are good, and for the good of those who seek your services or those who purchase your products. And so that, because I'm saying this, I throughout have been talking and using examples of jobs that are like, you see the exams and you get into these jobs. But now I really want to emphasize the aspect of job creation, the aspect of creating your own business, the aspect of running your own farm and 
there is no gain saying the fact that agriculture remains the backbone of every economy throughout the world. And we need to understand because even up to now, we see how many people who associate any job that has to do with agriculture as being something mean, as being something odd. Please, no, no. Look at the four best list of the richest Africans or even richest, richest people in the world. Most of them are farmers. Most of them are farmers, please. And you can be a farmer and you recruit people who have PhDs in agriculture to work with you as technicians. You can do that. And you can be a farmer and you are clean and you look good like my very good brother, uh, Roland Fomota of Green Ventures. And I'm really, really paying a, a very big tribute here today as I speak to anybody watching me or who will watch this video later on who have created their own enterprise in Cameroon, people like Joy, Joy Bate, Jaff Nui, and other people who do not only create their own uh, jobs, but are also encouraging other people, training them to pick up or to create things for themselves. is a, 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 a revolution we are witnessing and we have to all put our hands on death. So please, I think instead of taking your time, spending all your time and all your money registering for any public service exam launched on the left or launched on the right or launched in front or launched upstairs or launched downstairs where you will end up discovering that you have spent even 300,000 francs CFA or 500,000 francs CFA registering for exams and never, never passing anyone. Please, that is money you could use to invest in a well thought out, in a well planned project you want to carry out for your life, professional project. That is money you might decide, that, oh, I, I feel like I want to be a lecturer. I want to lecture in a university. I want to lecture and publish academic articles. I want to do this. And then you can use that money and rather sponsor yourself through university education. Or you might discover that, no, after everything, I want to own a farm. I want to own a business of my own. I want to create an innovative business that is providing a solution to a social problem in my area. Maybe your, your area is suffering from problems of energy, as many of our areas do. You might want to invest into solar energy. You might want to even generate your own uh, hydroelectric dam. Why not? And then you use that money and invest into it. So the problem here is that we have people, and, and it's, it also looks like even our governments are so happy about this confusion in the in young people that they keep on launching as many recruitments as possible. Because each time you see the recruitments that are launched, you look at the registration fee, you look at the number of uh, places that are available. For example, you could see uh, uh, an examination launch into a school like, um, like an école normal, like a, a higher teacher training college, where, for example, let's take history, they want to check 30 candidates. And you will understand that in every time in Cameroon, at least at least a thousand or even 600 or 500, from 500 to a thousand people will write that a single exam. You multiply the money that everybody will give there as a registration fee and the money they will spend getting stamps left and right, you multiply that money by 500, you, you will see the huge sum that will stand out. And at the end of the day, only 30 people are going to be taken in. And those 30 people will be taken on, yeah, some on matters of merit, but some, unfortunately, and so, so unfortunately for us, on matters that do not have anything to do with merit, and which is so unfortunate. So it, it, I, I think that it is high time we stopped giving out our money anyhow. It is high time we use our money. If you really find it in your heart that I want to be this thing, you really want to be a teacher, yes, then you should look at what it takes to be a teacher, what it takes to pass that exam and try to be as sure as possible about passing that exam. And then you can sit it. You can then sit that exam and write and pass and go. But if it should not be some kind of uh, hide and seek or some kind of trial and error where you just write the next available exam, the next available uh, exam into the public service, the next available one, you don't care in which sector it is. Today you write the one in, you want to become a state registered nurse, tomorrow you want to become a teacher, the next day you want to become a police officer, the day after next you want to become a, a gendarme officer, another day you want to become a, a military person, 
Then the next day you want to go to a nap. One begins to wonder, where exactly do you want to go? Because if we really choose where we want to go, based on our ability, and by ability I mean you have to know, if you want to go to uh, Eric, if you want to go to a, a school that trains uh, agricultural technicians, if you want to go to a school that trains teachers, if you want to go to law school, you should be able to find do your findings and know that a lawyer is supposed to be very intelligent in subjects like this and this and this and this. And then you check your profile, you check yourself, am I good at this subject? If you are not, please don't try, leave it. It's not for you. If you want to become a teacher, a teacher of biology, Check yourself, how good are you at, uh, at biology? So that you make sure that you are choosing what you have the learned skills to do, as well as even, and also see how you can be able to complement your job or your business or your enterprise with other talents that you have. So it is not magic. It is not magic. As motivational writers have said, you can become any and everything you dream. But if you don't dream, you will not have to complain tomorrow that you did not become something because you didn't have something you wanted to become. This is very important. I think it is on this note that I will slow down and take any questions about this confusion with jobs and career matters. I know I'm speaking in much more um, general terms, but this is time now for anybody. You can ask a question, you can give your own contribution, you can share contrary opinion. Yeah, everything is welcome. I think it's a democratic video. <laughs> this is a very democratic video. So let me just run down the comments and check if somebody asked anything or, or wrote a comment that it is worth sharing with us here. Okay, somebody said uh, we are under pressure from their employer under the private sector. This is Jessica Linda. Uh, please, could you explain that further? Could you explain that further? Uh, if possible, you can even call and join the video and, and, and share your opinion uh, live. Because as, as, as much as we go into the details, we can be able to start solving this problem. Yes, and I, I, I think you, you heard me saying this. I, I really have to say it, that those people, in the private sector who are mistreating and undervaluing their employees please repent repent and stop doing that there is nothing that can go with just you the owner no it can't so you have to value the people who are adding value to your business you have to value the teachers who have made, who are producing the results that are attracting students to your school we have to because I know circumstances where people teach or where people work in a business and at the end of the month, they are running after their bosses to pay their salaries. At the same time, while they have a landlord who is waiting for them to pay the rents. And these are the things that are discouraging many people and forcing them to run around left and right, writing any available exams. The next available exam is in the public sector. So please, I really, really understand this issue. And even as a private sector, please, is a fundamental human right for people to continue to grow in their profession. So even if you recruit somebody, it is the person's right to go for further studies. And sometimes in some countries, it's even a law that you, the employer, must sponsor that person's further trainings. So we really have to understand these things. We People need to grow while your business is growing. Please let those helping you in that business also grow with you. It's a, it's a, a very basic rule of life. So uh, please, could you say more about this uh, whole uh, idea of people having pressure uh, from their bosses in the private sector? Because yeah, I really, really uh, agree that there is a lot of fixing that has to be done in, uh, in the private sector in many African countries, especially in Cameroon. But I would like some other voice to some other uh, opinion to add more of the experience to, to uh, with uh, this private sector uh, syndrome and, or thing or way of treating people and how it contributes to making people confused in their career choices. We've been on for an hour and twenty minutes. I will be doing everything possible so that at 
the very maximum by uh, at the 100 and uh, uh, no, at one hour 30 minutes uh, the video can come to an end uh, and I'm really sorry I might not be able to, to summarize all what I've been saying today in French but and it's really important that these things are said especially because the, the, the syndrome the phenomenon of running after uh, public service is much much more present in Francophone Africa and for obvious reasons because I, the other day I was reading an article written by another person who is not even from the continent and saying the same things like I'm saying here because it's a, a kind of mentality that was transferred sometimes ago, some time ago, historically as we know, which is sad. We cannot want to, all of us, work in the public sector. It can't work that way. It can't work that way. And by the way, I should be reminding us of this famous quote, I can't remember who the author is, but I should say it is not my quote, who says the salary is not designed to make you rich. The salary is designed to keep you under your bus. <laughs> so <laughs> I hope that with this quote, people will get inspired and they may want to create their enterprise. And it is true. <laughs> it is really true. If you <laughs> look at what we call salary, it essentially, by the time it is the end of the month and you're receiving it, you've already used it. And yeah, you've already used it. Either you've even borrowed and you have to repay the, to repay the debts, and then you are waiting again for the next end of the month to repay the debts, and you continue to be loyal to your boss. So for those who are so much interested in being so, so rich, if you want to be very, very rich, please, you should create something for yourself. Don't work under somebody because salaries were from the very start were not meant to make people rich. So this, this, is, this is funny, but it is true at the same time. Yeah. The salary is not meant to be. And you, if you look at it very critically, you understand that there are people who have become rich with their salaries are people who have used their salaries to do other things, meaning people who have used their salaries to invest. If you just depend on the salary, you cannot be rich. If, if being rich is one of your objectives in life, because we have different objectives, I don't think that being rich is one of the objectives I have in, in life. I am very much more interested in rendering service to humanity, uh, to contributing to uh, knowledge, yes, uh, to building a world that is better than how I made it. Yeah, but some people may want to become very, very, very rich. If you do want to become very, very rich, please, the salary is not a helping thing, except you want to use the salary, except you want to use the salary to invest and then create wealth for yourself. You can create wealth for yourself just by getting the salary and going to maybe purchase a house. It's not possible. You must cultivate the patience to save and maybe even take loans and then invest elsewhere before you can be able to become very, very rich. And have you, we ever heard of the richest person on earth and then they give an example of somebody who is working for a government or who is even working for the UN because I think the most highly paid uh, salaried persons on earth are working for the United Nations organization. And when you look at the list, list of rich people, have you seen anyone I've been featuring there? No. When you look at list of rich people, they are people who have their businesses. So if you want to become rich, you think about the private sector and creating work by creating a business of your own. But if you just want to have your three square meals a day, yeah, you, you should be thinking about the salary. I'm not saying people should <laughs> resign from their jobs anyway. I'm not asking anybody to resign from their job. No, I think we... The jobs, even the businesses, the businesses will not run if we don't have people recruited. There is a sad reality of life. Because even the business owner, while he will be making the billions, he will be depending on people who are paid salaries. That's the, the sad reality of life. Questions? No questions. Well, I've seen a number of people who have said, well, I'm following you, Prof, like my brother Thomas, Tom well. And uh, I should now <clears throat> give a vote of thanks to all of my brothers and sisters who are watching. I will start from the bottom here. Um, I can see my brother Gilbert Noasak. I can see um, 
a princess no kusome i can see she last me augustin i can see she quenty i can see uh, jessica linda my sunny i can see ibrahim ngon i can see jessica okay now jessica the second time no let me just go up i can see gael rachel my text i can see paul dio that's the paul i can see my brother valerie dan ngadimon i can see uh, the boy tima bema i can see friend david that's mark I can see in short Donald, I can see Yang Simba, Eric, Eric, uh, Michael, Mine, Cole, my brother, my brother, Brooke, Cecil, I can see uh, Charles Gebogu, I can see you, Grand Frey, Paddy, Renyam, I can see Jasmine, Quack, uh, my very good friend and brother from Cote d'Ivoire who runs uh, an a social enterprise. Congrats for watching, brother, and I know that. You are doing so well, and I'm encouraging more people to do like you. I can see uh, uh, my elder brother, my VP, Josh Losak. I can see uh, Godi Songwe, <coughs> my brother. I can see uh, writer and daughter Alain, and I can see the writer Frigera. I can see my awesome brother, Pierre Nyamjo. <laughs> I can see uh, Nane. Oh, Nani, you said you were late. No, I think you were never late. It's a video you can watch later. Nani, to be my sister, poet, and teacher. And I can see uh, Becha Lenny, uh, another very good sister of mine and teacher. I can see uh, my brother from Chad, Israel, Africa. I can see my elder brother, Kuru Joseph. I can see uh, Musa Abdu Abdu, Dr. Ambro. Uh, there is also our brother Valerie Abbo. There is my brother and very good friend, Kencho Eric. There was the great poet Erin Galehulat. There's our brother, Nwakudu Oguna Efra Junior. There was my brother to uh, Tangwa, Dr. Tangwa Edwin, and there was our father in the house, Mokit uh, Cletus. And then there was uh, Stephanie Nyongo. Uh, yes, and there was also Long Linda, there was Prof Ashwin Tangkang, and there was, yeah. So please, all of you, I thank you for having watched. Thank you for having joined me on this live video. Please share your comments or your opinions, even afterwards in the comment uh, section below. I will have to take leave of you now, and um, as they say in French, shows the police, that shows the due. I promise it's a bet. I did promise that at the end of this, I have to comment with the link to the Erasmus Plus programs. I think this is the promise I've given for today. And I, I will make sure I keep the promise as soon as possible. And I will be hoping and praying that my discussions today about uh, career orientations were much more general, but I will be coming up in future with uh, more specific things like, and so like, I can really talk to young people about the possibilities they have if they are good at this subject or at that subject. I think I will be doing that in future. So let us consider the discussion for today as more of being brainstorming, as more of being an introduction to something that can be able to go further. But it can only go further if we bring up uh, possible uh, points for discussions or things where we are confused about even in our personal lives. And what, and then in trying to look for answers to them and sharing in video form, we can be able to reach out as many people as possible across the continent and across the world. Uh, because yeah, usually when somebody brings a certain question to me uh, in a private chat, I prefer to bring it and provide a public answer because I usually understand or at least guess that that is a question that many more people might have in their minds. That's, I think that's an approach that is good until it is proven otherwise. So thank you, thank you everybody. <coughs> Merci beaucoup. Uh, mes excuses parce que uh, la dernière partie a été longue que je n'ai pas résumé, mais je crois que si le temps le permet, peut-être demain je vais aborder le même sujet uh, complètement en français, si le temps le permet, mais je ne suis pas très sûr de cela pour le moment. Uh, mais je crois que tout le monde qui a été avec moi jusqu'à présent comprend quand même l'anglais. Et je vous remercie une fois de plus. Uh, je vais... Uh, mettre tout juste après la fin de cette vidéo le lien pour les programmes Erasmus+, comme je l'ai promis. Merci, ciao. Bye.